Hello everybody and welcome to the review of Skylanders Final Fire. Well I can't help it because this is how it's been. It's like, okay, let's let's get a Skylander, uh, let's put it on the portal, and let's record some new stuff. Do 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 playing stuff. And then it's like I've recorded everything with the half hours and so forth. I think what are you doing? And then, <laughs> I don't know what he was doing then. But yeah, I recorded stuff with the half hours, and then it's like it took me a week to put the video together. And by the time I put the video together, someone comes to me and says, Spyro, it's this as well. This has been added. You need to talk about these, these level things here. And it's like, okay. Yeah, I can understand that, right. I'll just move down here, remake the video. Okay, done. And then again, next week, someone says, Oh, Spyro, and this is the thing why I'm now doing it live. Look at this. And I'm just like, well, that means I've got to remake the video. So rather than remaking the video, I'm just going to do it live. I know it's going to be a bit bad because I'm on the old webcam. But Skyrim review, Rayman review, all my videos. Look at that. Ooh, shiny Mac. Lovely. So it is all recorded in HD. And I may splice, no, I won't splice it in because at the time I splice it in, clearly something new about Skylanders has come up and I'd have to go and re-edit it. So it's now just going to be pure webcam. And unlike Rayman and Sky um, Skyrim, sorry, um, unlike Rayman and Skyrim, which will take three to five minutes with you, like I could just talk three minutes and then it's done, Skylanders is probably going to be like 20, no, I have a lie, it's probably going to be about 10 minutes. So it's going to be double the time. If I said a normal review is five, it's going to be 10, so it's double. Because there's a lot to talk about, and a lot of things that I personally want to, to say, especially about this level, which I really like. But anyway, let's get on with it. So, Skylanders, finally. Um, yeah, it was a really good game. I mean, I love this technology of where you put, where you put whatever character you want in your character here on this thing, and it puts it in the game, and all the data itself saves to the, the toy, like if I go to um, her stats here. If you see her stats, even though you can't really, besides like level 4 and all of the max health that I've gained. So I like how it's all saved for the toy, and I could take this potentially around to Hip Hop Betsy's house, and she can go and um, go on his Xbox portal, because I am using a PlayStation 3. Hip Hop Betsy has an Xbox. So it's nice how all of these toys are universal and interchangeable. So it's also, these are not like defined the power region. They also work in the American state. So I could take this round Shadow's house and Shadow owns the Wii, which I also have, but I can put this PAL version PlayStation 3 toy on her NTS um, Wii and it still works. But it's really nice how all of the toys are interchangeable and also very maneuverable. So rather than taking a big game case round with the disc in it, you just take this off, pop it in your pocket, and away we go. So that's the first thing, which is really nice. The second thing I guess I kind of like, but I don't know. I'm in a bit of a bit of a uh, thing about this. Is these things, which are the levels, which are kind of a good idea. Like you can't actually finish the game until you get like all the levels. Like there's a special sea level here, indicated by a ship. A level here, indicated by the crypts. And I still can't beat the game because the other two levels which are due to come out, which is Empire of Ice and Dragon's Peak, just aren't out yet. So there you go. But it's, it's kind of nice to say, well, you can't beat the game straight away. Just take the game nice and slow because I have had games in the past where I've been like, oh, I can beat this game in a couple of days. Whereas Skyland actually forces you to wait. It's like, now you're not just going to rush through the game and beat it in a couple of days. You're going to have to wait for all these things to come out so everybody can beat the game all as a whole. Because there is a 100% ending when you've got all the treasures and all the levels. And because all the levels aren't out yet, you actually have to wait for the secret ending. Which is, which is good because that means there won't be any spoilers. Everybody will kind of beat the game around the same time. So we're kind of like that, but on the flip side, I don't like having to pay £20 a level. I don't want to pay twenty pounds to pay one to play one extra level. But uh yeah, I guess you do get the items which I'll talk about. So I suppose it's not just the level you get twenty pounds. But speaking of levels, 
I I don't know what to think of these these levels because the game itself certainly goes back to Spyro's original roots. Whereas in it's no longer like Dawn of the Dragon where it's a linear corridor, like in a new beginning, Eternal Night, it was pretty much here's point A, here's point B, you have to go from here to here on this on this path. There's no there's no going off to explore to find gems and all of the hidden treasures and the dragon eggs and the orbs and all like that. It was a very linear game, whereas this Spyro has got back to the original roots where it's like Okay, there's now a million split paths. Go, go find the hidden treasure. Go find the the um, what's called the scrolls. Go find the uh, other stuff. And it's like, yay, that's that's great. It's now like an original Spyro. And at some point, I think this was probably going to be more intended for adults myself because there are levels like the final level, Chaos's Fortress. There's no way a kid can survive that. I mean, I have trouble surviving that. And some of it is just really cheap, unavoidable hits. It's like, you, you're on a floating platform like this, okay? And it's now moving to this teapot you can see on screen. But there's a giant spike right here. It's like floating, floating. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, I'm taking damage! How can I avoid this? Oh, wait, I can't. I'm on that platform. And that is the one clip I will edit into this video. Just just look at this clip right here. If you can avoid this, you... I don't know how you can avoid this. You can't avoid this. Members of the magic element are stronger in this zone. So, I think at one point when they said they were bringing Spyro back, it was more intended for adults, and it's like, yeah, that's, that's a pretty hard level, that's pretty challenging, because there's other hard things in later levels like that, but then people were like, well, because it's all of these toys, it's going to be more kid-friendly, so we're going to have to put this more cartoonish feel over it. It's like, mm, okay then, I guess so, even though... I don't like the characters, like, I, I only like the Skylanders just because they each have their own indivi individual unique power and it's fun to play through all of them. I mean, the first time I played through, I played through as Spyro, obviously. But then, like, once I played it through, once I went back and tried to play it with, because Spyro is obviously a fire, a fire aspect, so I went to try and play the game through with only fire, only ice, only lightning, and found that each, each varied run through has different things that you can unlock, different things you can do, and it's really, it was really good. So, yeah, that's, that's another good part of it. I will get to the bad things. Some of the other things which I find interesting, I don't know if I like them, but I find interesting, are the additional items. And what they do, if you're having trouble getting through a level, and you've actually went and bought one of the uh, unlockable levels, you can put this on the portal with your Skylander, and as you can see, it comes up with the swords on the screen there, and if you, I don't know if you can see this, but flying around near um, Spyro here, you might be able to just about make out those two swords floating above my head. In fact, I think the attack's not going to go over here. But yeah, there's the two swords, so if you're having trouble, these two swords will uh, like floats around you, but there is a time limit for how long you can use them. As you can see, this time limit here is going down, and you can only use them for an extended amount of time. But if you take it off and then replace it, um, you can use it whenever you feel like it. The time limit will start where it left off. As you can see, it's still at half half damage there, so we'll take that off because I don't want to use that right now. And yeah, that's that's quite fun. Although I think because this has been turned into a child friendly game, it makes it too easy. I mean I got through all of the levels without using any of the any of the extra items and it was it was still pretty easy. I mean as I say, Chaos is Fortress is slightly hard and you will take damage, especially on the final boss, which is such a cop out, or should I say which is such 
uh, an annoyance because obviously, obviously, this achievement was made for adults, which is beat the boss with, with one Skylander. Like when I fought that final boss, I had to fight it multiple, multiple times because when when one Skylander faints, it's kind of like Pokemon. When one Skylander faints, you put the next one on the portal, then the next one, then the next one, so you beat it. But with the with the actual final boss, there is an achievement of beat it without dying. And the final boss, I'm not going to spoil it because obviously some of you might not have played it, but it has a third. It has a phase. The final phase is randomized, so it's like it can either be doing. I'm, it's all right. It's elemental. I'm going to have to spoil it. It's elemental, but it's like it could be doing. Um, Water attacks, which are easy to dodge. I can dodge the water one easily. So it's like, oh well, dodge water, and then it can switch to grass, and then to fire, and and so forth. But because it's randomized, the chances of you winning or the chances of you beating the final boss without dying to get the gold, the gold achievement, because it is a gold ranked achievement, is completely determined on luck of the draw of what it'll do. Because I've had times where it'll just do like a a mixed, a mixed lot of attacks where I can't really survive, but it's not too bad. Then I've had runs which are impossible because it's just like death, 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 fire, death, fire, fire, death, death. Like how could I avoid all that death? Look, that was a lot of death. I can't avoid that much death. And the one time, the one time that I did manage to get the, the achievement was because it was continuously using earth and water, which are the two easiest elements to dodge. So. Yeah, that was that was fun and annoying. It's that again proves that it was supposed to be a more adult game for the people that have played the original Spyro. Going to that, the music is lovely though, because the music I think was done by um, the original Spyro cast. There's a few levels like Arcane Armory, and the idea is you're obviously trying to save the world because the darkness is closing in. And in the Arcane Armory, where you're basically Racing the racing the bad guys to this final um, whatever you call it this final orb which you need to save the world. The music just keep, keeps getting more intense and really epic because you're in this great big cave, and it really does make you feel like you you really have to work to get this last thing. The fate of the world really is about to be decided if you don't get to this orb before the enemy. And it's like oh that's that's lovely. So yeah, that was. Uh, I like the music. Music's good. I would certainly give the music. Well, I wouldn't give it five stars. Like there is better music, like Skyrim and Final Fantasy. But I would. I'd certainly give it a good, a good four stars, three and a half, four stars, because there are parts where the music does get rather epic. Like now, it's just chilled and playing a couple of ding dong ding chime things, but. I like the music, but going back to why I think this was also, and something I really like about this game, because there's a lot of this all the way through it, something I like about the, um, why it was intended for people who played the original Spyro, this particular level here, the Creepy Crypt, actually does something from Spyro 1. You might as well just take out the words Creepy Crypt and paste over it, Dark Passage. Because it does what the Dark Passage does, where you shift between, well, light and dark. Even though it's a light world, dark world, it's still equivalent. So you might have like a nice, happy, cute doggy one minute, and then when you're forced to open the door, so the door only open when you're in the dark, you switch to dark. Oh my god, the puppy has turned into a big red demon dog that's going to kill me. So, yeah, it's, it, it is basically Dark Passage. It's such a... Such a nice little what the hell's going on there? It's such a nice little um, throwback to Spiral One, and it's a nice reference to Spiral One. So that's why I think it's also intended for like original players as well. Good. I'm doing terrible at a live review, like <laughs> like with Rayman, which is done because you'll see Rayman tomorrow. Rayman will be coming tomorrow. Like with Rayman, which was done because I could take selected clips. I could just like go, oh okay, I can talk over this clip, stop it, talk over the next clip. But because so, so many updates keep coming out for Skyland, and like the greatest and most biggest update, which came out yesterday, which I now have to add, I will do that in the end. 
So, the next thing I would like to talk about is the level, as I said with myself here. Right now, Spyro is at level 10, or Insane Spyro, because I am Insane Spyro, is at level 10. You can't go past level 10. No matter how much you fight, you are not going to get any more than level 10. And in the previous video, I said, um, uh, what did I say? I said, oh, perhaps they are doing what World of Warcraft does. You know, like how you had the vanilla world where you could only raise it up to, is it level 30? I've not played World of Warcraft. But then you had the, um, the burning mage or something where you could get it to level 50. And now you've got, um, Wrath of the Lich King where you can get it to level 70. And now you've got Cataclysm where you can get it to level 80. So you see how they're releasing different games and you can increase your level every time? Well, when I, that's what I thought, and I said, oh, they're gonna do a World of Warcraft and release like Skylanders 2, 3, 4. And lo and behold, yesterday what I said was confirmed. There is a Spyro 2 coming out in the fall of 2012. All they have called it is Skylanders 2 Giants. I haven't got an official name for it yet, but it is called Skylanders 2 Brackets Giants, where there's going to be like bigger, bigger worlds, bigger guys to put on the portal, because there is a whole new set. There is a few uh, people that you can see in the trailer and pictures of them from the New York Toy Convention. If you want to go check out the pictures from the new, from the pictures in the video, just type in, uh, New York Toy Convention 2012 Skylanders 2. And it should come up. You'll certainly see the pictures. And what they said in the article, because I've actually got my article on screen right here. What they said is Skylanders 2 is a sequel to the original Skylanders. It's going to follow on directly from Skylanders 1. And it's also going to unlock more of your character. Whereas you can only level these up to level 10 before. You will now be able to level them up a little bit further. It doesn't say to level one, not to level 100. So it even says there not to level 100. But it does say you'll be able to level them up further, which basically just says when when it comes out not to 100, it basically just says, yeah, I'm not letting you level it up to 100. Here's Skylanders 3 for 2013. Ha <laughs> ha! Making money is easier than I thought. So. Yeah, my my suspicions were conf confirmed, so look out for that in fall 2012, where I'll probably do another live with you, because no doubt there'll be a bajillion, million, million updates on it every single time, like new levels, because there is a new level which is coming out, which is um, reference to Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon, but so I'll probably do Spyro Skylanders 2 live again, because no doubt I'll get a bajillion updates like new levels, new monsters, more updates about Skylanders 3 and so forth. So overall, I'd say Skylanders is a fun game, like I'm wrapping this review up now. But Skylanders is definitely a fun game, like I would recommend buying the start pack. I wouldn't recommend really buying all the characters if you don't want to complete the game. You can just buy the start pack to um, finish the story mode at least. And have a little bit of fun, I wouldn't recommend it for everybody, but and unless you're a really hardcore Spyro fan, or if you really want to go and buy all the figures, then it's not for you, unfortunately. Best I can give it, because of, like, the innovation, as I say, the innovation, this is amazing. And I've already said before, this could be used for so, so many things, like Pokemon. You could put, you could put the Lugia statue on here, and Lugia's now in Pokemon. Or another idea is, because the 3DS's portal is a lot smaller than this one. It's like about the size of the lid of this teapot. Don't ask me why I've got a teapot long story, but it's like that big. So compare the two. You can certainly see the difference between the lid of this teapot and the actual portal itself. So it could be used for such such so as like you put the, the mini portal in your pocket and you have your Pokemon toys and little Pokeballs on some kind of belt and then you can like, you know, Wi-Fi battle one when you do that because there is like a little sensor bar here so I don't know like there's another there's another portal over there and you're like okay we will be able to attack do fight so because of the technology I can't I can't really bash Skylanders because this is this is just amazing and has so many uses it could be used for so it's got a three instantly music nice 
the scenery rather cartoonish because it's been knocked down for children except for a couple of the final levels like the big dark chaos fortress. Um, characters are very poor. I just hate every single character except the Skylanders themselves. I can give it a 3 out of 5 and you know I, I really can't see anyone else giving it much higher. And it certainly has, and wrapping this up, it certainly has replay value because obviously I've done everything there is to do, but then next week when the uh, Empire of Ice comes out, which is basically a, a level cut out of Spyro Year of the Dragon from the PlayStation 1, when they bring that out next week, it's like, oh well, it's certainly got replay value because I bought the new, the new one on the, on the thing. In fact, can I get the cutscene again for you? No, no I can't. I thought it might come up with a cutscene again to show you, like, the reference to the Spiral one. But never mind. So that's all I can about say, because I don't know how to do live recording. So I'm going to add to this now, I know it's gone on for long enough, just to say why I haven't had videos out this week, because I'm working on a Shiram. Here is Fabric. This is not Fabric for the Shiram. This is Fabric for Kira the Glaceon's Keyblade. So Kira the Glaceon, there's your fabric for your free blade. Second, Rishiram actually arrived. Here he is in all his awesomeness with his cool, uh, where's the button? Button, button, who's got the button? Hold on a minute. There you go. So yes, yeah, there's Rishiram in all his awesomeness. Looking at you. So I, over the past month, because I've got like a couple of months to finish him, probably one month really, because I have to get him shipped out to America, ready for Acon, because it's going to take a while to deliver him. And here's all the fabric, which I will be needing to refabric him. It's like I've got a giant carpet down there. So, I might have less videos out over this month, because I have to work on a charm this month. But there is going to be a lot of videos. There are videos coming, videos are lined up. Like Fracture Hills Part 2 from Spyro 2, for example. You don't think I just recorded half of Spyro and then quit, did you? No, I completed the whole level. So that's lined up, that's ready to come out on Monday or Tuesday. I've got the, the Pokemon Red all lined up and they'll be coming out over the week when I have time. So, I will see all you guys tomorrow in the Rayman Origins review. And, yeah, that's all I can say. Spyro 2, oh sorry, <laughs> Spyro 2. Skylanders Spyro Adventure, good game, quite a bit of replay value. Can't really recommend it to many people though. Like I can recommend it to a few, but unless you're you're willing to put the time and money into all of the technology and toys, not really good. So yeah, Spyro Skylanders, I'm gonna have to, I'm going to have to give you a three uh, three point five three point five stars out of five. It's average, mediocre, run of the mill. See you next time. Of course, this is not the end though, is it? Because as of uploading this video, something else came out, so now I've got to talk about it, which is this. This is the limited edition Dark Cinder toy. It was only released in New York, and is currently limited to 3,000 worldwide. Something I would really like to have, considering it's limited edition, I wouldn't mind owning all of the Skylanders stuff. But, if you go on eBay, and you can even check this for yourself, all the toys that are currently available on eBay are around... 100 to 300 dollars. So I'll probably never ever own this, but I'd just like to point that out that there is a Dark Cinder figure out there worth quite a lot of dollars. So see you next time. And if anybody's feeling generous, you know, you could always go on eBay, Dark Cinder for me as a Christmas present. But I know you won't. Anyway, see you next time. Boop.